What's going on guys? Jax the Bearded Hiker here. Today I'm going to show you how I grill the perfect steak. Alright, before we get to grilling, let's get our grill set up first. Okay, we're already uh, heating up here. You can see I got me a piece of mesquite wood here that I just lightly keep off to the side and we'll give our steak a slight smoke as we're cooking this. You can see here I got some lump charcoal and I got some charcoal briquettes. It's just what I had over from a previous cook and that's why I'm using it. Uh, you could use all lump or you could use all charcoal briquettes. But what you want to do is, is go ahead and put, and we're going to be cooking this steak, uh, the first part of it, indirect, okay? So we've cleaned our grill really well, pushing off that to the side. We're going to lightly put our wood here just on the edge, all right? And uh, basically what we're going to do is we're going to get our steak on it, and we're going to put it over here to this side over here and we'll put the lid on it like this as we're cooking all right let's go ahead and uh, get our steak so one of the key components about grilling the perfect steak is steak quality okay this happens to be a prime uh, two two point eight pounds three inches thick um, if you can't I would say get the best quality steak that you can afford, okay? Um, splurge if you can, because your steak's gonna be better, all right? Now, what I did is earlier, about an hour or so ago, I seasoned this very lightly with salt. So now what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna pat it dry, that moisture. Now we're gonna go on with this stuff right here. This is called Gator Shake. And this is uh, a, another YouTuber out there by the name of Papa Texas. Uh, not sure how, if he makes this himself or he bottles it or whatever. He sent me this. And he also sent me a lot of this other stuff here. So I'm gonna leave a link below to uh, Papa Texas's channel. This is really good stuff. I've already done one steak before with this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna light, well, I wouldn't say liberally, but I mean lightly coating of this, okay? This is almost like, I would call it like an all-purpose seasoning maybe. It worked really good on the last steak. Just gonna season this sucker up a little bit everywhere. Okay, now we're gonna go on with some of this. This is a uh, Honey Aleppo pepper. And I'll leave links to all of this stuff below. I think you can get this on Amazon. Where did we get this at? Like some local store, okay? Anyway, I'm gonna just throw that on there just like that. Just kind of pat it on. Flip it over. All right, so we got a base of Gator Shake and then our top crusty, it's got pepper in it and all that stuff. And now what we're gonna do is I'm going to go ahead, just because I like this bone, and I don't want it to blacken, I'm just going to take a little bit of aluminum foil, so I'm gonna, purely for aesthetics. I'm just going to wrap that up just like this. Okay, and lastly, another key component to grilling the perfect steak is a thermometer that we can monitor our temperature as we cook. Because remember, we're cooking indirect. So we're just gonna go in, into the middle here, right there, all right? We're gonna take our trusty ink bird. I love this thermometer. I've heard they got a new one out. I'll also leave a link below, an Amazon link below to uh, one of these thermometers if you, any of you are interested and uh, picking you up one of these. All right, now let's go over here. All right, we're gonna go ahead and move some of this uh, mesquite over into our coals. Won't take long, because I've been heating, preheating that uh, mesquite there. All right, we're gonna go ahead, lay that on our grill, just like that.
And what's going to happen is when I put this lid on it, see it starting to smoke already? It's going to capture that smoke. And uh, flavor our meat. Now what we're looking for internal temp right now is when it gets to 80 degrees internal, then I'm going to flip the steak over. And then I'll show you what we're going to do after that. All right, that's where we're at right now. We're looking for 80 degrees. All right, I'm just uh, giving y'all some bonus footage here. We seasoned up some uh, parsnips and uh, got a couple of chilies on there. And we're just going to roast some of these up along in this cook. We'll probably move them around a little bit. Now, one of the things that, uh, one of the key things is you want to monitor the temps of your grill. You see right here? I got a little uh, thermometer in there that I use. We're running, I don't know, I think it was around 250 or something like that. If I started running too high, one of the good things about the Kudu is you just, ooh, that's a little high. You can actually just move it around like this. Just unloosen this little knob here and you can swing it around at will. It's got a plancha pan. I'll leave a link in the description for the Kudu as well. It is an awesome grill. I love it. And they're not paying me to say that either. All right, we've just reached 80 degrees. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and flip the steak over. <sighs> Got caught in my thing here. Now I'm keeping it just like that because we were on this side. So, all right. Now what we're looking for is when it gets to 100 degrees, we're going to start us a chimney full of charcoal. All right, guys, we're at 115. We're going to go ahead and pull our probe out, remove it onto a cooling rack, and keep the heat in there. All right, moving it, removing it to this cooling rack. Okay, we're going to pat it dry with a paper towel, and we're going to put our coals in there, and we're going to do a sear off on it. Okay, we got us a half a chimney full of red hot coals there, which is exactly what we want. We got a cool grate on there. We're gonna kind of be doing like the slow and sear method here, okay? All right, we're gonna set a timer for one minute. So again, this is like the slow and sear method. Um, and the cold grate technique, and I'll show you how that goes. I've tried it, and it seems to work fine uh, with this. So after a minute, we're going to pull the steak to this side, and then we'll rotate our grill grates to this side. All right, I'm going to go ahead and flip, take our steak and rotate it right there, and we're going to go for one minute, and then we're going to do the same thing one more time. So it's going to be a total of twice on each side of a, or a sear twice on each side, two minutes. Let's go ahead and flip that bad boy over. All right, here we go. Next important. It's been two minutes on each side. We got a good crust on there. Very important. Move your steak to a like a cooling rack here, okay? Because if you could put it directly into the plate, all those juices are going to get in there, and it's going to make the bottom of your steak soggy, all right, and wet. And we don't want that, okay? We're going to let it rest for about 10 to 15 minutes. All right, here we go, guys. We're just going to go ahead. We've been taking pictures. So let's go ahead and do this really quick. We're going to take it off the bone first. Did that goodness. Woo. All right, I'm just going to go right in the middle. Probably let it rest a little bit too long, actually, for my taste, but not bad. All right. <clears throat> 
Well, let's give it a taste. Oh yeah. Mmm. That's delicious. Hold on. Goes down like a $20 hooker. Alright guys, the perfectly grilled steak every time. Do it.